All right, you guys, welcome. Looks like we have a few friends joining us. So we're gonna let some friends keep joining in. But while we do, um, thank you guys for joining us. Just a reminder that you guys um, are muted and cannot see each other, um, but we would love to hear from you in the chat. Say hello in the chat as you're joining in. We'll begin our program soon. Just giving a little time for folks to, to pop in. Um, if you want to say hello in the chat and let us know where you're streaming from, we would love to hear um, some of the friends that we have joining us today, whether you're from California, other parts of the United States, or from Baja California, we would love to hear from you. Looks like we have some friends from La Mesa. Let's see if anyone else is joining. All right, as we have people joining, I'll just introduce um, myself and who we have with us. And we're gonna start out with a little poll um, as people are joining us. So my name is Haley Priest. Um, I work here at the NAT and I'm joined by my friends and colleagues, um, Cypress Hansen and um, Ari Hammond. They both work for the NAT. So Cypress is our science communications manager and Ari is our library director. Uh, and so they'll introduce themselves more in a little bit, um, but now is a, a great time, like I said earlier, to say hello in the chat. Um, and then we also have a poll for those of you um, that are on Zoom with us to answer um, if you have ever been to Mexico. So let us know, have you ever been to Mexico? If you're joining us on Facebook, um, let us know in the chat in that live stream. Um, and we would love to know if you've been to Mexico, if you live in Mexico, um, and if you do live in Mexico, we'd love to hear if you've ever uh, joined us up here in California, if you've ever been to California. So looks like we have a few folks that have never been to Mexico. Um, we have one friend that has been to Mexico. And again, you can go ahead and let us know where you're joining from in the chat. We'll give maybe another minute or so for folks to hop on before we get started. And we're gonna be learning a little bit more about some animals, some plants um, and other uh, fun things that can be found um, both in California and Baja California, the Baja California Peninsula today. So it looks like you maybe have most of the folks that are going to join today. Um, just another reminder, we cannot see you. We cannot hear you. You're on mute um, and your video is um, off, but you can um, send chats or questions to us here, all of the panelists um, that hopefully we'll have time. We will have time to answer them at the end of our program. Um, so feel free to ask questions. Um, let us know, engage with us on what is um, going on on the screens, um, but we cannot see uh, see you. Um, and we are broadcasting this to Facebook. Um, so without further ado, um, let's finish. We can finalize this um, poll, share our results. Um, so it looks like we have uh, one person that has been to Mexico, um, two folks that haven't. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so let's welcome Cypress and Ari, um, and I'll let them both give a little introduction of um, who they are and maybe um, one of their favorite places uh, that they've uh, traveled to or visited. Uh, okay, I guess I'll start. Hey everybody, I'm Cypress. I do science communications at the NAT. Um, and I would say one of my favorite places that I've traveled to is actually here in the United States. Um, and that would be uh, Glacier National Park up in Montana. It's a very beautiful mountainous uh, park that has lots of beautiful wildlife. Cool. 
That is super cool. Um, hi guys, my name's Ari. I'm the library director here at the museum. Um, and some of my favorite places to travel, um, I went to Europe last summer. I went to the Netherlands and got to ride a bike through their park. Um, but I really love going to Baja, California. Um, I go to Cabo with my family whenever I can or down to Ensenada or Rosarito. So I'm really excited for today's um, presentation. Super fun. Thank you guys for introducing yourself. Um, so we're going to start. Cypress is going to kind of give us an introduction to Baja. So we've talked um, in our past um, Baja Live Youth programs about some of our research projects that have happened in Baja. And so we're kind of wrapping up our series um, with this overview. Um, so Cypress, take it away. All right, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna start out here with a map of uh, our part of the world that some of you may have seen before and some of you may have not. Um, of course, we've got the land and the ocean, um, but I like these kinds of maps because they just show us what the environment looks like. And you can see that there's lots of green up here on the right side on the east part of this map. And then down below, there's a lot of green. And then there's lots of green along the coast too. And usually that means that there's lots of forests. Over here, it's a little bit more brown, which often indicates that there's gonna be a lot more deserts. And you can kind of see all of these different kind of patterns and designs. And I would say that those usually indicate that there's lots of mountains. And you can see that down here in Mexico, and you can see that along the coastline. And so when I add in a little bit more information here, you can kind of get an idea of where these different environments are in both the United States and in Mexico. Um, and so we've got the US here, of course, Mexico down here. San Diego is this tiny little white dot down here right by the yellow line, which is that border between the two nations. Um, and today we're going to focus a little bit on California, which is here, but we're also going to focus on the Baja California Peninsula, which is this long, funny strip of land right here. Um, and so if you look at these two places on this map here, you can kind of see that they're both about the same length. Um, Baja California, the Baja California Peninsula is just a little bit skinnier. Um, and you can kind of see that both of these places, both California State and the two states within Baja California Peninsula, both have a lot of browns and they both have a lot of greens and they've both got a lot of those patterns that indicate mountains. So these places both have lots and lots of different habitats. Um, for example, in California, we've got mountains and forests and beaches and deserts and we've got scrub lands this one here of the Hollywood sign this is in LA and this is actually pretty similar to what we have in San Diego um, these like chaparral scrublands um, <clears throat> so California is super super diverse in all of its habitats and Baja California that whole peninsula is no different so they've got tall snowy mountains and dry super dry deserts um, tropical beaches dunes that go on forever, it seems. They've also got really kind of tropical scrublands as well. And as you can see in this photo down on the lower left, um, this is a picture of the border, which part of this picture is in San Diego County and part of it is in Northern Baja California. And you can see that the nature on both sides is actually real, pretty much the same. And that's why we always say something, uh, we always have this line that we like to say at the museum, which is that nature doesn't stop at the border. Um, and so we think it's really important to study both sides. Um, so to give you an idea of where these different habitats in the Baja California Peninsula exist, um, I kind of laid out a map of the whole peninsula here and um, you can see that border image was taken right up here where you can kind of see a little bit of a line um, and then just below are these really really tall mountains um, and then in the middle of the peninsula it's a lot drier so there's lots of deserts and then the dunes you can kind of see are where things are really tan and kind of sandy looking um, and then, of course, all along the coastline, we've got all of these beautiful tropical beaches, or some of them are tropical, especially further down south. And then we've also got um, these this little patch of green down here at the very bottom of the peninsula, and there's lots of mountains down there, and some of them are uh, covered in what we call tropical thorn scrub. And... Um, 
we'd be really interested to hear if you'd like to throw it in the chat, which if of any of these spots you would love to visit if you could, or if you've ever been to any of these places before. So in my opinion, because I really love wildlife, um, one of the coolest things about having all different kinds of habitats in the, this part of the world is that you get all different kinds of plants and animals. So we're gonna spend a little time now uh, learning about some of the locals from the Baja California Peninsula and California. All right, you guys. So we are going to do a quick pop quiz. Uh, this is a fun pop quiz, uh, and so we're going to be talking and looking at some photos of a few different species, so plants and animals, found um, either in California, Baja California Peninsula, or both. And so your job is to let us know either by answering the poll um, on Zoom or on Facebook, letting us know in the chat um, which one you think it's from or if they're from both. So our first one that we're going to be looking at is this photo here. Um, and if you joined us back in September, you might already know the answer to this because this species um, was the highlight for our September program last year. So this is the California red-legged frog. So go ahead, um, answer us um, in the poll or in the chats, um, whether you think this is found in California, Baja California, or both. So we'll give you guys about a minute to get your answers in. And while we are taking answers for this Cypress, I'll answer your question that you asked. I would really love to go um, and explore the dunes um, from the photos that you showed. That looks like um, a super fun place to explore, especially uh, going with maybe some of our entomologists and learning about some of the cool bugs found there. All right, so. Shall we reveal like, the answer? Um, yeah, we can reveal the answer. It looks like May would love to go to the beach. So I Ooh, agree, cool. that sounds fun too. <laughs> yeah, the tropical beaches sounds nice. Ooh, all right, everybody says both. Let's see if that's correct. You are right. Yay, great these job, frogs, you guys. These frogs live in both the mountains uh, just south of the border, as well as in Southern California. And then there's a different subspecies that grows or lives up in uh, Northern California as well. You ready for the next one? Yes, we are. All right. So this next species, you can see it's not an animal. <laughs> it is a plant. Um, and this plant is the Cardone cactus. So do you guys think this species of cactus is found in California, in Baja California, uh, the Baja California Peninsula, or both? What do we think? Again, you can answer in the polls or let us know in the chat what you think. I think it's pretty amazing how large this cactus is. You can see the person standing next to it. It's pretty crazy. All right. Give you about maybe 15 more seconds for our, maybe our teachers that are pulling the class to answer. Drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one is just in the Baja California Peninsula. Oh, it looks like we had a few folks that got that correct. Nice. All right, next one is these cute little seabirds. Ooh, all right, you guys. So do we think these seabirds with the really cool hairdo are found <laughs> in California, Baja California Peninsula, or both. And they are called elegant terns. They are pretty elegant with that. I hair. would say so. <laughs> <laughs> also kind of punk rock. <laughs> yep. All right, we have some answers coming in. I love the one that's carrying the fish. Yeah. <laughs> Bonus points if you know the fish. <laughs> 
Cypress, I was going to ask you the fish. It's an anchovy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we'll give maybe 10 more seconds. All right, three, two, one. All right, let's see. We have an answer for California. We have a few answers for Baja California. Let's see what our correct answer is. Both. <laughs> so you guys were kind of both correct because they were found in California and Baja, but they actually yeah. <laughs> are found uh, across the border, which is pretty cool. And one of the places that we can find them is actually in uh, the south end of San Diego Bay. Cool. So yeah, totally. go go look for some birds with a fun hairdo next time you're out on an adventure <laughs> at the bay. All right, here's a fun one. Ooh. All right. So this cute little critter, do we think they are found in California, Baja California Peninsula, or both. This one is called the uh, San Bernardino Flying Squirrel. All right, what do we think? I think it looks like a superhero flying through the sky. <laughs> I thought it kind of looked like a slice of bread with a tail. <laughs> Are they as big as a slice of bread? Are they bigger? Um, I think they're only slightly bigger. They are pretty small little critters. All right, we get, we'll give our friends 10 more seconds to answer either in the chat or through our poll. Yes, they are very cute, May. Very, very adorable. <laughs> they're also very soft, so I'm told by our researchers. <laughs> All right, let's end our poll, share our results. We have a few folks that think California, and we have some folks that think both. So let's see what our answer is. Just California. Just California, and they're found in the San Bernardino Mountains, uh, as their name, <laughs> name gives away. Right around LA. Yeah. All right, let's go to our last friend. Ooh, it's a colorful <laughs> one. All right, what do we think? Do we think this cool critter is found, colorful critter, is found in California, Baja California Peninsula, or both? This one Cyprus, is called, what is this one? Yeah, this one is called a thorn bug. And oh. as you may have guessed, it is trying to look like a thorn on a branch, kind of like a thorn on a rose bush. Very cool, just a colorful one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's trying to blend in, but it's doing it with some fashion. <laughs> yeah, it kind of looks like a bird face to me too. Mm -hmm. Like that's the yeah. Of the... It's got its little face and eye here, and then its wings are tucked underneath. Yeah, it's beautiful. It looks like an artist painted it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did a mural. All right, we'll give our friends ten more seconds to get their answers in. All right, let's go ahead. We can share. Looks like most of our friends think that they are found just in Baja California Peninsula. So let's go ahead and see what our answer is. You That's are correct. correct. And if I'm not mistaken, this one actually exists pretty far down at the bottom of the peninsula on the southern edge or the southern cape. Um, and then it also exists down in uh, the mainland of Mexico and Central America, too. Very cool. Yeah. So next time we visit Baja California Pins, so we got to keep an eye out for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This and lots of other cool bugs. Yeah. Um, so nice job on our pop quiz. Just checking out some of the really, really cool creatures that live in our region. Um, so I'd like to show just a couple more pictures of some of the plants and animals that live down in the Baja California Peninsula. Um, they are so diverse, as you can tell. Um, feel free to let us know if you recognize any of these organisms. Um, a few of them look familiar to me, um, just because I've seen a few of them in California. Um, but some of them uh, 
are found only on the Baja California Peninsula, um, and they don't live anywhere else in the world. And so um, sometimes scientists use this fancy word to describe animals that exist in one place and nowhere else, and that word is uh, endemic. So if a bird is endemic to the tip of the Baja California Peninsula, that means that you could search the whole world looking for that bird, and the only place that you'd find it in the wild is on the tip of that peninsula. So a plant and, or animal can also be considered endemic to a single mountain or a single island or a single dune system. Um, so these endemic species are extra important for us to go out and learn about because it's a lot easier easier for them to possibly go extinct if their habitat were to get damaged by something. So this is one of the reasons why our scientists have been studying the Baja California Peninsula for so long. Um, the peninsula has a lot of endemic species that don't exist anywhere else, and we want to make sure that those really beautiful creatures have a nice place to live for a really, really long time. So in order to learn about these cool creatures and all the places that they live, uh, we take lots and lots of field trips. So everybody loves field trips. I remember when I was young, uh, field trips were probably my favorite part of school. Um, and our scientists take field trips down to Mexico all of the time. Um, and there they meet up with their friends in Mexico, other scientists, and together we all try to learn as much as we can about the plants, the animals, the weather, the ground and the soils or everything else in the habitats that are down there. Um, and while we're in order to learn about this stuff, we measure things like this person measuring this lizard's tail. Um, we collect specimens. We take lots and lots of notes in our notebooks. We ask each other questions. We look at guidebooks. We take lots of photos. We ask the locals for help. The list goes on and on. There's so many different ways that you can learn. Um, and so when we take these field trips, if they last for maybe a few days or a couple of weeks, we use another fun word that starts with an E and we call them an expedition. So an expedition um, <clears throat> is a word that some people may have heard. Um, a lot of people think of like a long journey into the wilderness or a trek over Antarctica or a big voyage across the sea that people used to do way back in the olden days. Um, but really, if you decide to go on any kind of journey, doesn't matter where, it could be in your neighborhood, it could be in your favorite park, it could be in another country. Um, if you go out on that journey with a goal to learn something along the way, that's an expedition too. So at the NAT, our researchers have been going on expeditions across California and the Baja California Peninsula for about 150 years, which is a really long time. Um, and so uh, to talk about all the stuff that happened a long time ago, we've got Ari here and she's an expert in the Nats history. So she's going to tell us a little bit about some of the field trips from the past. Thanks, Cypress. Um, and I'm super excited because I actually took field trips to the San Diego Natural History Museum when I was a kid. Um, it was not 150 years ago, but it feels like that <laughs> sometimes. Um, but I've always loved going on field trips. Um, and I think one of my favorite things on going on the field trip is getting to climb on the bus with all of your friends and sit in the back of the bus. Um, and here we've got pictures of people sitting in their very old cars back in 1880s um, and sitting around and having lunch with each other. So one really cool thing about our field trips, our expeditions to Baja California, is that we started doing them not just ourselves, saying, I want to go explore, but with people from Baja, California. Um, so um, on the right here, we have this guy sitting on a big crate looking at the camera. Uh, his name is Lawrence Huey. And the guy right next to him sitting in the chair, that's his friend, Jose Maria Gallegos. Now, they were just friends who liked to explore things. Lawrence Huey was from San Diego and Gallegos was from Baja, California. Um, and they went out on their own to go explore nature and learn about all of the amazing wildlife that was around us. Um, and then eventually they started working with the museum and got the museum to pay for their field trip. 
for their expedition in 1923 down to Baja, California. And they did it with the tools they had at the time. So while we might take um, a big off-roading vehicle or something, they took these really old cars that could break all the time. So we have pictures of the cars breaking um, and being stuck in the dunes out there. Um, and they just tried their best with what they had. But you can tell, I think, that they still had a great time. Can we go to the next page? Thank you. Um, so here are pictures of some of the things they found. Uh, so on the left, we have a picture, a really close up picture of a wolf spider. So in that big image of all of the animals Cypher showed earlier, there was a wolf spider. Um, this is one of the first pictures of a wolf spider in Baja, California from about the 1920s. They also found cool moths and butterflies, and they started to document that because it's really hard to explain to people, hey, I found this big fuzzy spider out in the middle of nowhere. So they found these Cardone cactuses. Um, and I think this picture is cool to show you just how big they are. Um, they were looking for nests up in the cactus and had somebody at the bottom holding a ladder against the cactus and someone else climbed up to peek in. Today we could use a drone or something like that, maybe even a GoPro on a really long extended thing. This is what they had and they just tried. Um, and then over here on the right, we have some baby pelicans they found in a nest, which I think is just so super cool. Oh, and then if you go back one page, Cyprus, this is actually um, one cool thing of making records of our field trips and our expeditions. Um, so in one of their early expeditions to Baja, California, they took a boat. They went by boat and they ended up at uh, Guadalupe Island. Um, they didn't know whole much, a whole lot about elephant seals at the time. They thought once the seal got on land, it really couldn't do much. Um, but this person on the left found out elephant seals get pretty big and pretty fast. So you have to be very careful with them. <laughs> Luckily, we know this and we're extra safe around any animal species that we see. Um, but it's cool that they took pictures, they made records, like Cypress mentioned, in notebooks, saved it and glued it together for scrapbooks for us so that we have this early record of what the wildlife was like at the time to compare to what li wildlife is like now. We can see, are there more baby pelicans? Are there less? Um, and we used mules at the time to help us get to the most extreme areas. And we still use mules today to get up to some really high mountain peaks. Yeah, all right, that's a really good point to make that even um, those of you guys that are watching, if you guys do go on an expedition, whether that's to a park near you or even in your backyard, um, you can make records, um, take photos and make records and maybe see how things change um, over the course of even just your lifetime. And that actually becomes really helpful for us for science. So these field trips, um, it's not just to see something cool, it's to document it. So we collect information to see how things have changed each year. Um, and we really try to focus on taking pictures. Uh, these days, it's so easy to take a picture, um, upload it on iNaturalist, which I don't know if you guys have learned about before, but is a tool that I use, that my kids love to use. Um, and it can share like proof that we saw this animal in this location without harming it or affecting it at all. Um, and this is how we learn about wildlife. Um, all of this data comes together to create knowledge and information. Oh, and I see in the chat, someone said that they love to use iNaturalist too. That's so awesome. Um, and it really helps. Our scientists will go to iNaturalist and say how many wolf spiders were found in this area. And they can have all of that data that we can actually help with, which I think is really fun and cool.
Nice, Ari. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit, just a tad, about uh, some of the field trips that we uh, are going on right now or that we've been going on recently. Um, one that we went on last fall, just a couple of months ago, was led by our birds and mammals team, and they went down to San Quintin. Um, so San Quintin is right along the west coast of the peninsula, and it's pretty far north. You can see San Diego in this picture here is right above the border, and San Quintin is just a few hours down on the coast. Um, and when they went down there, they had the goal on their expedition to understand a little bit more about the birds that are living in the wetlands around the San Quentin Bay. So they wanted to know which birds were there. They wanted to know how healthy those birds were and also how the birds were interacting with other plants and other animals and all, all the different things that were happening in the, the, the wetland ecosystem. So this is our curator, Phil. He's our bird expert and he's taking notes. He's watching the birds through his um, telescope. Kind of, It's kind of like binoculars, but one, uh, one eye instead of two. And um, these are some of the birds that he collected and he, he took notes on these birds and he took pictures of them and he was weighing them to see how much, how healthy they were, if they had enough fat stores for the winter. And you can see him here with some of his coworkers as well, um, just taking note. Sometimes they might, they make notes on the birds, like if they hear them calling, um, and then they will take notes on that. Um, and then we also worked with the mammals and the insects as well down there because we wanted to know how the mammals and the insects and also the plants were interacting with the birds. So we took lots of notes on this. We took more photos. This is a beautiful photo of a little uh, mouse, I believe, that lives down in the, the wetland area. Um, and these are this is one of our colleagues down in Mexico. He works for a similar organization to the NAT down in San Quintin. Um, and so th these people, as you can see, they're taking notes, they're taking pictures, they're taking measurements. Um, and all of that is helping us learn more about that ecosystem um, because that ecosystem does face lots of threats and we wanna make sure that the species there are um, going to be able to withstand those threats or to see if there's something that we can do about those threats. So one of the things that we can do is uh, we can take lots of pictures even if we aren't in these specific areas. So I'm gonna pass the mic now to Lauren who's going to share with every Buddy, how we can all help to learn about these different organisms. Thanks, Cypress. Hi, everybody. My name is Lauren Marino Perez. If you've joined us for a program before, you may have seen me. I run community engagement here at the museum, which includes community science. Um, and a lot of that is how can we help nature? And a way for us to help nature is by helping science, um, which I love to do, and I'm not a scientist, but I can still do it. You don't have to be an adult when you don't have to be somebody who does science for a job or went to school to learn about science to help science. You can still do science and you can still help science. So um, how can we help nature? It's just to get out and explore. So you don't have to go to a faraway place like these expeditions went to. You can get out and explore your own backyard, kind of like Haley was sharing, sharing she likes to do. I love to do that too. We have a picture here where we're out exploring right next to the freeway. If you're at all from San Diego, we have freeways running through um, all of our areas, but there's all sorts of nature all around here. And we always need the help of people just like you to share about the different wild plants and animals you're seeing and where you're seeing them. So get outside and share what you find. Take pictures. We especially want to know about any sort of wild plants and animals you find, any reptiles and amphibians, like lizards, snakes, frogs, um, any wild plants you're seeing. The museum researchers really love to see all of those pictures and learn about them. So when you come across anything in any wild plant or animal in Southern California or even the Baja California Peninsula, we really want to know about it and see it here at the museum and sharing it with us is really easy to sort of share what you find you want to use an app or a website um it's an app and a website called iNaturalist so Ari was talking about this earlier iNaturalist.org is where you're fine well you'll find it uh, if you're under 18 you'll want to set up your free account with an adult to make sure it's okay to do and you're being safe and then all you do is you get outside 
take pictures of what you come across. I take pictures of lizards in my yard all the time, snails, little bugs. Um, iNaturalist will help me identify what it is if I want to know what it is, which I usually do. Um, and then, um, so I take the picture, I put it on iNaturalist with my phone. Using a phone is great. iNaturalist tells me what it is. And then I can, and then that share it automatically to people all over the world. Then people like scientists at the museum will see it as well. And they want to learn from it and they'll pull it into their research, just like the scientists going to Mexico are doing. They're documenting things. You're helping them document um, our world all around us which is a huge help. There are all sorts of projects you can take part in with iNaturalist all the time that are always going on. The museum has them. We have them on our website, on our community science page, and we'll share that link in the chat as well. There are big projects that are going on all the time and then some big ones that go off here and there. One coming up is the Border BioBlitz, which we're really excited about. That will happen in April. Um, and at our next live youth program, I'm gonna share all about Citizen science, community science, that's what we call it, when people help scientists and science learn more about our world. That's going to be on March 17th. I'll share more about how to learn all about the projects that are coming up, how you can find a project to join near you, no matter where you are in the world. There are all sorts of projects you can join right by you to take part in, and also how to just get out there um, and find your own observations. You don't even have to add them to a project. We'll just People just want to see them anywhere, and it's like exploring a whole other world by seeing your photos. So join us next time. If you can, we would love to see you. And right now, I think we also have time for some questions. We'd love to take questions from the audience about anything um, any of us have talked about, Cypress, Ari, or me. Please throw your questions into the chat. Yeah, thank you guys for all that wonderful information, all the great photos, images. Um, kind of ways that we can get involved either on our own time, maybe with our class um, or maybe at work. Um, so um, if you have any questions, please put those in the chat, whether you're joining us on Zoom or you're joining us um, on Facebook, let us know any questions that you have. Um, and we have a few minutes to be able to go through um, some of those. Um, and it looks like one that we can start with um, is this can go to either Ari Cypress or Lauren. Do you guys have um, a favorite part of your job? You guys all can answer. I would say that much like when I was saying earlier that my favorite part about school was going on field trips, um, I would say that my favorite part about my job is when I get to go on field trips still, <laughs> um, because sometimes I get to join our scientists out in the field when they do these expeditions, even if it's for one day, and um, I get to go out and learn about what they're doing so then I can tell stories about it. So I would say the field trips and being outside and witnessing the wildlife and seeing how the science works is definitely my favorite part of my job by far. Very cool. So our young friends that are joining us, you can go on field trips even when you're an adult. Which <laughs> even I when you're not a, a scientist to too. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> um, I think my favorite part of the job is just all of the cool questions people ask that I get to help answer. Um, so being the librarian, people will come up to me and say, um, you know, what does a male black widow spider look like? And it's like, oh, that's actually a really cool question. Let's start to figure that out. Um, so this question that May put in the chat, how big is Baja, California? It's very long, it's about 775 miles long. Um, and I helped find that for our Baja, California exhibit, um, going through all of the different uh, resources to see exactly how long is Baja California? Do you measure it this way or a little bit over or how does that go? Um, but then it makes you really curious and excited too. Very cool. Lauren, how about you? Yeah, that's a hard one because I have a lot of fun getting to work at the museum. I would say the most fun I have is getting to go outside the the building, which I think is a common theme, mm -hmm. um, and getting to talk with people and learn about how, um, what they like about San Diego, what they like about nature, what they care about, and also how they can help us with that. So a lot of my job is getting people to use things like iNaturalist and sharing what they're seeing in the natural world with us. Um, and I find it to be really fun because most people get super excited to learn 
how important what they're seeing is. I think even before I worked at the museum, I took for granted, like, oh, it doesn't matter, like this lizard I'm seeing in my yard or these bugs over here. Um, like nobody cares, I just care, but that's not true. There are people all over the world that really care. And when I share that with them and the internet lets us do that now, which is super cool, um, then they learn more about our world and then we can help protect it. So I think I get really excited getting to do that and see other people get excited by that. Yeah, very cool. Okay, we have a question in the chat about spiders. I don't know if anyone knows much about spiders. Maybe Ari, you do since you did a little bit of research for someone. Um, but do spiders have tongues? And if so, how do you measure them? I feel like that'd be a good one for, for you to do some research on. <laughs> they actually, they don't have tongues, which is kind of cool. They have um, these mouth parts. Um, and I can mm -hmm. never say this right. It's called chelicerae. Yep. You got it right. Um, and it, they pull everything into their mouths and then swallow. Um, I will say, though, that one thing that I think is really cool is that snails have teeth. And snails have really cool teeth that are kind of like um, a nail file. Um, and they have rows and rows of these teeth, like sharks. They, they're constantly producing these teeth. So a snail will take a bite and just grind something back and forth against its rows and rows of teeth and then swallow it. <laughs> very cool all right um we'll give a chance if there are any last questions may wants to know how small are the teeth i mean i would assume they're pretty small because snails aren't that big they're microscopic <laughs> yeah yeah sometimes you can see them kind of like you can see the little um the little rough spots on a cat's tongue, which is much, much the same kind of texture to the, the like tongue teeth of a um, snail. But I would say, yeah, they're pretty microscopic. But if you have a fish tank at home and you have snails in it, sometimes you can see the snails like put out their teeth and then bring them in as they're eating algae off the glass of the fish tank. So sometimes you can see the little dots of teeth, but uh, otherwise I'd say they're pretty tough to see. <laughs> I just threw in the chat also a community science project called Snail Blitz, where um, the Museum of Natural History in LA, they want to know all about the snails in Southern California, and they have a big project, so especially all year long, but especially in February and March, it's a snail Because it's wet. Because it's wet, and so that's when we're going to see snails and slugs, their relatives, and uh, if you take pictures and share it on iNaturalist, those scientists there, they really want to see it, so you can learn more Ooh. about it by following that link. Very cool. Um, well, it looks like that was the last of the questions that we have coming in. Um, but I wanted to mention that we do have a variety of um, education resources on Baja California and our um, exhibit called Expedition Baja that we just opened last year in May. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to come and see that, we would love um, for you to come visit us at the NAT in San Diego and see that exhibit it highlights a lot of the research projects that we've um, referenced in this series, as well as some other fun ones. Um, so we'd love for you to come see that. But if you can't come in person, um, we would love for you to just check out our resources. We're going to have some new ones um, popping up there in the next few months, some uh, curriculum for you to use with your class. Um, and we would also love for you guys to join us for our next live youth program in March um, called Science Needs You. Um, and we we're gonna be talking more about um, the different ways that you can um, join projects on iNaturalist as well as um, just get out into your community and help science. So thank you guys so much for joining us and thank you to our special guests, um, Cypress and Ari um, for a wonderful presentation. And um, we hope that you all have a great rest of your Friday and we'll see you in March. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody. Mm-hmm.